What's up my brothers and sisters? Today you're gonna see an awesome treatment video with Jen, who's a 36 year old woman who came into our office about three months prior to this treatment visit with 15 months of moderate pain underneath her occiput going down to her superior scapula on the left side that really bothered her when he she slept on her left side she would get four and a half ten pain it was a nuisance not as bad as some of her other patients but you can't take that away from any patient if they have a pain they say it's bad then obviously we're here to fix that so she was like 95 percent better with all of her symptoms I created a new symptom for her, which was behind her ear. So if you're a provider and you're ever dealing with a person's new symptoms that you cause and provoke, here's how you deal with that. I, the ear? This is still like kind of numb. Okay. Behind the ear? So it's behind here, mm -hmm. like in here. Jen came in on this treatment visit and she had some numbness tingling symptoms going up into her face and behind and above her ear. And it's funny to me because sometimes people are like, oh, these symptoms just popped out of nowhere and then I'll have to correct them. I actually cause those symptoms that you're having because a lot of these nerves that we're trying to remove the adhesions from underneath there, they go up to the head or the face. And unfortunately, one of the consequences of adhesion release methods type of treatment is that you can sometimes make people sore, irritated, or inflamed. It's okay, it's normal. And by the next visit, she didn't have any issues. So it went away right after this. At, for, at first, it was the whole left side of my face and head. Right. Now it's just condensed to... Got it. The nerve. Sitting here. here now, zero to 10, that nerviness in that spot. Like 10 out of 10? In the ear? Yeah. It really only kind of hurts if I Behind it. touch it. When somebody has symptoms only when they touch something, this gives us helpful information because I will often ask them immediately afterwards, is there anything you can do or any other time of day that you will feel these symptoms? They will often say no. When they touch the tissue, we know that it's irritated and overloaded. But if they have no provocative movements, no provocative postures, no provocative times or day, it's not provoked enough in order to be overloaded with any specific motion or activity. So it's not very helpful for people to tell us, oh, the tissue's just sensitive, because we need to figure out why the tissue is sensitive in order to deload that tissue so that it ultimately has increased capacity and doesn't get more sensitive. What do you feel with this? <laughs> I feel like my arms are tired, but the shoulder doesn't hurt. That's shoulder doesn't asking. hurt? No. Look down to the right. What do you feel with that? Yeah, a little bit of a... That spot? Yeah, pull here behind the ear. Here to 10? Mm, like a four. 11 degrees, 44% function. What do you feel here? Nothing. No symptoms with this. Mm -mm. CF is 61 degrees, 101% function. What do you feel there? A slight pull on the left-hand side, but just like a stretch. Where? Here. About one finger on each side. What do you feel here? Nothing. Nothing? Mm -mm. The great auricular nerve comes out of the C2 nerve root and it comes on top of the SEM and it goes like this to the back of the ear and that's the most common nerve that's entrapped for the ear. And it's not great over here. And it's also not great in front of the middle scalene here underneath the SEM. So I'm gonna treat this guy first because this is not great. Specifically behind the ear, you have the posterior auricular nerve and the great auricular nerve, which come out of the C2 nerve root right underneath the SCM. So one of the things that I will often do to check these nerves is see if the SCM up high where it attaches to the mastoid is hypertonic and that will tell you when that nerve is irritated or stuck. So if anybody's ever pointing to symptoms behind the ear in this area, you're gonna look for the C2 nerve root underneath the SCM. PIT. The PIT stands for posterior intertransverse tissue, and it's not super common, but wherever the adhesions are bad is where we have to treat them. And as an adhesion release methods provider is palpating the neck, they will often just go to wherever they feel the most gluey tension that is blocking the tissue. And that's what I did there and why I treated the posterior and nerve transverse. But that's not a super common tissue that we will treat. We'll treat the nerve roots at scalenes 20 times a day, and I'll treat the PIT maybe 
once or twice a week. It still feels like a little, it's it's the ear. It's like here, this part of my ear. The back side. Like the little, like almost yeah. like the cartilage. It just okay. feels a little. No change. The neck feels great. This just feels, it still kind of feels like a little. That feels the same. No. Yeah. The ear, okay. It's, an, it's a numbness. It's not necessarily a, like a pain. You'll notice I just got the app out during my treatment visit. Sometimes when I'm not on the right track or I'm not sure what I'm doing, I will immediately get the app out and right in front of the patient. Sometimes I'll show the patient or I'll just, I'm talking my thoughts out in my head out loud. The providers we coach will sometimes say they're hesitant to do that because they want to convey a certain level of expertise. I have found that our patients are very interested and happy to be where they're at when the provider is humble enough to say, I'm not sure if I'm on the right track. I don't know if I have this correctly and therefore I'm looking this up. So don't be afraid to just get the anatomy app out if you're confused about something and you wanna be able to make sure you're feeling a very specific nerve. I believe that patients have a respect for a provider who's willing to be humble enough to say they don't know. Many people in chronic pain are intentionally or subconsciously gaslit by their provider to say, oh, you don't have this problem, you don't have that problem, you don't have a disc problem, so on and so forth. I'm either getting somebody permanent pain relief or I'm not helping them and therefore I don't know the right answer. Maybe that's a good position for a provider to be in. Like I'm either fixing you or if I'm not fixing you, then I'm not the best person for you as a patient. And so if I'm not getting a symptom better in the micro in one treatment visit, I'm obviously not on the right track. So therefore I can be humbled off to say, maybe I can figure this out and I'm gonna get the app out. Generally speaking, when patients or chronic pain sufferers go to providers who say, this is your problem and it doesn't sound right or if it's a conservative treatment, it's not fixing them, I tell them to usually run out the door. It, it feels better. It still feels like I still just have- Percentage better. 30? Okay, I'll take it. It just still, it's still just lingering numbness. If it, uh, I'm not gonna do any more on that because I don't want to make your ear fall off. What did you say? You <laughs> lying your back. <laughs> when people have nerve symptoms or symptoms from a nerve entrapment, I typically like to make symptoms get at least 50 to 100% better. And depending on how old they are or how degenerated their problem is or how long it's been lasting, that's not always possible. Jen is pretty young. I wanted to get more than 30% relief. Ideally, I'm aiming for 50 to 100%. I would have liked to have made that symptom go away completely, but her nerve was inflamed from the previous treatment. When she came in for the following treatment, that ear symptom completely had gone away. So sometimes there is a time window that we need to respect as providers, one or two or three days for the inflammation in the nerve to die down because there are blood vessels inside nerves and you can inflame a nerve and then it just has to spend some time recovering. That, so when you did it again, that's when I felt is it went up to the ear. C4 nerve root at anterior scalene, moderate to severe, and that was referring to her the back of her ear. So circle that piece. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do any more there, okay, I'm just feeling. You. What's most likely happening there is that the C4 sclerotome goes up right behind the back of the ear. The C3 through C0 all go up a little higher. C4 gets that area, so if I'm pushing on the C4 nerve root, which is in the ballpark of the sclerotome. A sclerotome is when the embryological origin of the tissue. So how we develop as babies or embryos, certain cells are grouped together and they spread out as your human body develops. So the nerve root, the joint, the muscle tissue, the ligaments, the tendons, all in that C4 area that come from that C4 spinal level can provoke the same triggers. So if I push on the C4 nerve root, it can go up to the ear. So that's my best rationale for how I provoked that nerve in the first place. 20 degrees, 80% function. What do you feel there? Nothing. CF is 61 degrees, 101% function. Half finger. What do you feel there? Nothing. Okay. 